Hello, this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Thank you so much for tuning into this video in which we will look at using the TI-84 calculator to solve problems involving the normal distribution. Now we've already looked at calculating probabilities from the normal distribution. What we did was we took a score and we found how many standard deviations it is above or below the mean. And we used our knowledge of standard deviations to calculate the probability. For example, we know that only 2.28% of scores are more than two standard deviations above the mean. The problem is, however, sometimes we'll get a score and the number of standard deviations it is above or below the mean, i.e. its Z score, won't be a nice number. We don't always get a Z score that's a whole number. We might get a Z score that's, you know, 0.325 standard deviations above the mean. We can't remember the associated probabilities for every possible Z score. There are infinitely many. So we need another way to calculate probabilities. Now, back in the day, and even now at some universities, they still use tables for the standard normal distribution, but we're going to use our calculator. So in the TI-84, you want the normal CDF function. So to call that function, you press second and then vast, which brings up the distribution menu. And this function is the second option. Note, we're always using normal CDF. Normal PDF just calculates the value of the function, but we want normal CDF. So let's use that on this question here. So let's say IQ scores normally distributed, mean 100, variance 225, and we're going to calculate the probability someone has an IQ within a range. So to start off with, note that all calculations involving the normal distribution involve standard deviation. So if the variance is 225, the standard deviation is the square root of that, which is just 15. So let's find the probability someone has an IQ between 90 and 110. Now, of course, I wouldn't expect anyone to be able to do this off the top of their head, but I want you to have some idea of what the answer should look like. So if we get an erroneous answer in our calculator, we can pick that up. So 90 and 110 are both close to the mean, both within one standard deviation. So we'd expect a relatively high probability for scores to be within this range. So let's go ahead. We'll call the normal CDF function and all we do is fill out the form on your calculator. Lower limit 90, upper limit 110, mean is 100 and standard deviation is 15. So putting that on our calculator, we get about 0.493. So about 50% and we're done. So now let's find the probability someone has an IQ less than 105. So again, we always use the normal CDF, not PDF function. So we know that the upper limit is going to be 105. We still have mean 100 and standard deviation of 15. But what is going to be the lower limit here? Well, what we actually put on our calculator is negative 10 to the power of 99. This is like our calculator's version of negative infinity. This is the lowest number that can be stored on the calculator. So we're saying it can be any number, any like negative number, and all the way up to positive 105. So always use this when it's a less than question. So note that may come up on your calculator as minus 1e to the 99. That means exactly the same thing, minus 10 to the power of 99. So again, I don't expect anyone to be able to do this off the top of their head, but you should have some idea of what the answer should be. So note 105 is just more than the mean. So the probability it's less than a number that's just more than the mean, it should be an answer that's a little bit more than 50%, because 50% of scores of a normal distribution are below the mean, 50% are above. So indeed, putting this in our calculator, we get about 0 0.63, all right, and then we're done. All right, let's do this final one. What is the probability that a person has an IQ score more than 125? Well, we know we're going to use normal CDF again, and this time the lower limit is 125. 
So when you're doing more than questions, we're going to put as the upper limit positive 10 to the power of 99. This is the largest number your calculator can store. This is like our version of infinity. More than 125 means the scores can be 125 to infinity. So then we again put mean 100, standard deviation of 15. So once again, I don't expect you to be able to do off the top of your head, but we need to have some idea of what the answer should look like. 125 is a long way above the mean. It's around about one and a half standard deviations above the mean. So we would expect a low percentage of scores to be greater than that. And indeed, if we put it on our calculator, we do get the low number about 0 0.05, which is what we'd expect. All right, thank you so much for tuning into this video. This has been the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Have a great day.